For centuries, mankind has gazed skyward, fascinated by our luminous companion. But the Earth may have more than one moon, and these objects are truly strange. Mysterious objects orbiting the Earth, hidden in the darkness, have been spotted by astronomers and sky watchers of all ages. Imagine a world where the moon is not alone. A second moon could be a dark phantom orbiting in a strange path in the shadow of the Earth. The moon has accompanied the Earth for around 4.5 billion years and is therefore a constant companion of our globe. This natural satellite not only follows the Earth, but also interacts magnetically, as we know from the moon's influence on the Earth's tides, for example. Our moon fascinates laymen, astronomers, and poets alike with its interplay of brightness. About a quarter of the size of the Earth makes our moon uniquely large compared to other planet-moon systems in the solar system. The latest research even assumes that the Moon and Earth are actually a previously unrecognized double planet system. People love the Moon. In ancient times, moonlight was worshipped in the same way as the Sun. In particular, there were female Moon goddesses who were invoked for fertility, the cycles of nature, and rich harvests. Today, the Moon is viewed far more soberly, but it still fascinates us with its interplay of light and shadow. But what if this luminous companion is not the only moon that follows the Earth? What if there is another moon out there that is constantly hidden in the darkness of the Earth's shadow, or that is so small that we cannot see it with our own telescopes? Such a discovery would not just be some kind of scientific sensation. It would have far-reaching consequences for our understanding of the entire evolution of our world. Can the Earth have an unnoticed second moon? The idea that the Earth could have an unseen second moon fascinates and shocks at the same time. Could it really be that a larger object has always been following us and we may have never noticed it? This can also be uncanny because we think we know so much about the universe and yet, in this case, we would have missed a second moon on our doorstep. Or it's simply a hint, a hint from the universe showing us that we should always expect surprises. But the question is, why did such an object go unnoticed? The answer could lie in the complex dynamics of celestial mechanics and the limited range of our observation technologies. A hypothetical second, hidden moon, would have to be on an orbit that hides it from our eyes. This is absolutely within the realm of possibility, because there are limits to celestial observations that are comparable to the blind spots in the mirrors of cars. One possibility would be a synchronous orbit that exactly matches the Earth's rotation, so that the second moon remains permanently hidden behind the horizon. Another possibility would be a highly elliptical or polar orbit that keeps another Earth satellite largely out of our field of vision. The existence of such a body must mean that it's located in an area of space that is either too dark or too remote to be detected by our telescopes. It could be hiding in the so-called Lagrange points, where the gravitational forces of the Earth and Moon are balanced, which would provide a stable hiding place for a small moon. If the hypothetical second moon does not emit any light itself, it would hardly be visible to us there. However, researchers may have discovered Earth's strange second moon after all. Did Frederick Petit see the second moon in 1846? It was a magical moment in 1846 when the French astronomer Frederick Petit announced something great. He presented the scientific community of the time with the fantastic discovery of a second moon. This bold claim spread like wildfire, and Petit quickly attracted the attention of astronomers and the global public. Petit was not a blank slate. This astronomer was considered a luminary with a keen eye for detail and a passion for the unknown. But what did he really see? What is astonishing about his report is the small distance of only around 11.4 kilometers from the Earth's surface at which he claims to have spotted the second satellite. Nowadays, this corresponds roughly to the normal flight altitude of commercial airplanes. This proximity was also highly unusual, as it contradicted the known laws of celestial mechanics. Petit's claim sparked curiosity and skepticism. While some were fascinated by the possibility of a previously unknown natural satellite, many in the scientific community doubted the credibility of his claims. The fact is that we should know about this moon today at the latest, because commercial airplanes would see it regularly. But no, Petit's moon was only sighted by Petit himself. This raises the question of what the Frenchman could have seen that appeared to him to be a moon. An asteroid or comet would certainly have collided with the Earth at that altitude or exploded in the atmosphere. Satellites did not yet exist at the time, and so it is often speculated that Frederick Petit 
may have sighted a UFO. Did Dr. George Valtemat see the same phenomenon in 1898? Another exciting sighting of the moon took place just 50 years later. Did the German scientist Dr. George Valtemat see the same thing as Frederick Petit in 1898? No, not quite, because the German scientist surprised everyone by observing a whole system of small moons orbiting the Earth. This bold statement came at a time when astronomy was making rapid progress and new discoveries were not uncommon. Valtemat was firmly convinced of the existence of these additional moons and presented his discovery with great enthusiasm. However, Valtemat's claim was met with widespread skepticism in the scientific community. Many astronomers doubted the possibility that such objects could exist without having been noticed before, especially given the advanced observational techniques of the time. Critics argued that a system of small moons would have significant gravitational effects on Earth and the known moon, none of which have been observed. Despite intensive searches and verification by other astronomers, no evidence could be found to support his claims and so his discovery was eventually considered to be false. However, we now know that there are several smaller rocks orbiting near the Earth, which usually burn up silently as they enter the atmosphere. Is it possible that the Germans spotted some of these objects with a not yet fully developed telescope technology and mistook them for moons? Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto and a second moon. Who would have thought that Clyde Tombaugh, the renowned astronomer who discovered Pluto in 1930, was also obsessed with the search for a second moon? He believed the reports that several astronomers before him had seen objects following the Earth on its orbit around the Sun. In 1959, the search for Moon 2 was given new impetus by the involvement of an astronomer of Tombaugh's reputation and stature. The scientist set about observing and analyzing the Earth's orbit with the same care and precision that he had applied to the discovery of Pluto. However, despite his extensive search and the use of advanced astronomical instruments and techniques, Tombaugh could find no evidence for the existence of a second moon. His report showed that with the best available technology and the expertise of a leading astronomer, no second moon could be found, nor was there any evidence to support the existence of such a moon. But this was by no means the end of the second moon sightings. Even astronomers like Tombaugh can be wrong and simply overlook something. Second moon finally discovered in 1991. Good things sometimes take time, and so the Moon 2 mission dragged on for centuries until the year 1991 dawned. An object called 1991 VG caused a stir in the astronomical community because its orbit and properties were so different from those of all other known space objects, and the initial assumption that it might be space debris turned out to be wrong. Further investigations indicated that 1991 VG was a natural body, and the sensational news was that Moon number 2 had finally been found. The size and composition of 1991 VG, together with its unusual orbit, pointed to a small Earth satellite. For months, the reports came thick and fast, but then came the disappointment. Whatever 1991 VG may have been in reality, this object was not a second moon flying close to the Earth. Planet and Moon, or rather, two planets. For some time now, our Earth and Moon team has been raising the intriguing question of whether the moon is not a moon in the true sense of the word. Science defines a moon as a natural satellite orbiting a planet. Traditionally, our moon was also viewed in this way. However, there has been increasing evidence for some time that the Earth-Moon system could be more of a double planet system. One of the main arguments for this new view is the unusual size of the moon compared to the Earth. The moon is about a quarter of the diameter of the Earth, which is almost gigantic compared to other moons in the solar system. The moons of most other planets are much smaller in relation to their planet. Mars's moons, Phobos and Deimos, are only tiny fractions of the size of Mars itself, and the differences are even greater for the gas giants. Phobos and Deimos are extremely small compared to Mars, with diameters of only about 22.4 and 12.6 kilometers respectively. In contrast, Mars has a diameter of around 6,779 kilometers. These size ratios are typical for most of the lunar planetary systems in the solar system, except one. The pairing of Pluto and the moon Charon is also very unusual in terms of size. The moon Charon is more than half the size of Pluto. 
There is also currently a debate as to whether the two are not in fact a double planet. The unusual size relationship between the Earth's moon and the Earth means that the center of gravity of the Earth-Moon system is not inside the Earth, but about 1,700 kilometers below the Earth's surface. In the case of Pluto and Charon, this Barry Center even lies outside Pluto. These two unusual examples are unique compared to all other known planet-moon systems. The most common theory of the history of the Moon's formation is the so-called Giant Impact Hypothesis, according to which the Moon was formed by the collision of the young Earth with a body about the size of Mars. This collision was so violent that material from the Earth and the collision body was ejected into orbit, from which the Moon was later formed. However, the Moon could also have once been a small planet that was attracted by the Earth's gravity at some point. Subscribe to the channel now. There are always great new videos coming.